What's up YouTube, Maven here. Welcome back to another Pioneer gameplay video. Today we got a Demonic Drakes deck from user Semba Nobuhisa, who took it to a first place finish in a small Japanese tournament. It was Hararuya of 17 players, but first, uh, first place out of 17 players is pretty good. Cause you know, like at least 10 of those players are bound to be playing meta. So this is a Grixis Demonic Drakes using Demonic Bargain. So I'll show you the combo here. Demonic Bargain makes you exile the top 13 cards of your library, then search for a card and put it into your hand. Now, the reason we want to exile the top 13 cards of our library is because we are running Crackling Drake and Serpentine Curve. So Crackling Drake's uh, four mana X4 when it enters draw card. Its power is equal to the number of instant and sorcery cards you own in exile and in, in the graveyard. And the same thing with Serpentine Curve. You make a fractal token and put X counters on it where X is the number of instant and sorcery cards you own in exile and in your graveyard. So yeah, Demonic Bargain just literally pumps these guys up real big. So say, um, say we already have a Drake. We can play a Drake on turn four and then turn five when we have five mana, we can go Demonic Bargain for three, and then we can go and tutor out a Teamonic Battle Rage, or Teamonic, Teamer Battle Rage, and then we have two mana left over to pump it and win. So there's that that we can do. Uh, we also have, um, there's 22 lands, but there's also some uh, some MDFC lands, the flip cards, so we have 24 total lands. Kazul's Fury uh, is a land, but also you can sack a creature for three mana, and it deals damage equal to the sacrifice creature's power to any target. So it's literally just a fling. So if we don't play it as a land early on and save it for later, we can like do our little demonic thing, attack with our Drake for a million, and then fling it at our opponent's face. So there's that. Other than that, the only other creature that's really in here is Magmatic Channeler. So I feel like the deck is pretty loose and pretty fragile, and I don't know how to feel about it. But it did go first place in the 17-player tournament. So um, I have at least a little bit of hope in it. Now, the one thing that I really, really do not like about this list is the, the removal suite. Its removal suite could have been like Fiery Impulse and Push, you know? But instead, it's three copies of Shieldred's Edict and two copies of co uh, Collective Brutality. Not sure how I feel about this, um, but we'll see. So it can make him sack a creature, you know, a token, a walker, whatever. Collective Brutality can kill a creature at minus two, minus two. You can also drain and gain for two, and then it can also duress their hand, but you can escalate it and discard cards. So if you need to get more sorceries in your graveyard for Crackling Drake, then there you go. Got Thoughtseize for a little bit of removal, uh, hand disruption, got four of those. Got three copies of Stubborn and Isle to protect our Drakes. And then we have eight total cantrips. Consider an opt because we really need to fill our graveyard for the Drakes and also find the Drakes. So that is pretty much it. 24 total lands onto the board. The board is literally just four cards. It's all four ofs, except one's a three of. Very, very simple. Blue Sun's Twilight, gain control of target creature with mana value X or less. So it's literally an entrancing melody. Good against things like Ledger Shredder. And then uh, entrancing melody as well to gain control of creatures is like literally the same thing. So just a bunch of gain control effects in case the opponent's on like a creature deck. Then we have Power Word Kill for more spot removal and then Dreadboard for more spot removal. So at least we can remedy our, our removal suite situation after sideboarding if we really need to. So it's very weird deck, very weird and loose list. And uh, but I'm very curious to see how this is going to play out. And oh, yeah, Magmata Chandler also helps dig for the Drake, by the way. <laughs> so uh, let's go. But before we get to the gameplay, as always, we give a shout out to our supporters. So shout out to tcgplayer.com, the best marketplace on the internet to get your Magic the Gathering singles, sealed products, accessories, anything magic related you wanted. They got it with a variety of sellers all across the nation. So you can pick and choose the best prices for you. Anything you purchase through our decklist link down below or our TCG player link down below will help support the channel. Stock up on the Lord of the Rings cards. And then shout outs to Mana Traders for making it possible to do YouTube. I'd never be able to buy all these decks to play for YouTube because it'd cost a fortune. So for an affordable monthly fee, Mana Traders allows you to rent and play all the decks you want to play on Magic Online. So it's an absolute lifesaver. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I'm talking too fast. So if you want to play Magic Online but don't want to spend a fortune, check out Mana Traders in the link down below with the code for 10% off. 
And then finally, shout out to our Patreon supporters here, all these lovely, beautiful people for helping to support this channel and keep it afloat all these years. Y'all are the real MVPs. If you want to join the Patreon as well, link down below. And now let us get to game number one. Leave your predictions. What is our record going to be? I'm going to say two and three. I really have no clue how this is going to do. All right. Let's do it. All right, Lirock. Lirock is here. Let's go. Uh, yeah, I'll we'll keep that. You can never go wrong with the cantrip hands, a cantrip start. Now, the reason why this deck has no basic lands is because Crackling Drakes are double red and double blue. Meanwhile, we have four copies of Thoughtseize. <laughs> so it's like you literally, like you have to play all dual lands or else you can't support turn one Thoughtseize while also a double red, double blue card. <laughs> Looks like we're fighting Mill, which uh, Mill might actually help us. It'll make our Drake one shot if we can get a Drake out. But since we're milling ourselves for 13 with a Demonic, it's going to be a horrible matchup. Like, absolutely dreadful. <laughs> so I think this is just going to be an auto loss, unfortunately, to start the day. Um, but, you know, didn't know what we were expecting with this deck anyway. So uh, we'll take one loss because it was bound to happen eventually. But, um, yeah, Demonics are going to be a little bit painful. We might, we may have to just side them out because the opponent's going to mill us for us. Like, we don't have to worry about milling ourselves. And I was surprised that this deck didn't have a copy of, of Mind... Uh, What's it called? Mind. What's the two mana card that mills seven? Or like, it could have had breaking and entering. So, or like, we could have breaking and entering ourselves off of like demonic and like milled ourselves to like a million, gotten our Drake like to one shot territory. So now our Mimatic Channeler is three pounds. Okay, there we go. There's a crackling Drake. Wait, this needs four. This needs four. <laughs> All right, well, I guess we'll ditch a thing here. We'll take opt and then we'll play opt. See if we can get another Drake or like a team or battle ragu. Uh, Children's Edict is fine, we'll keep it. All right, now our dude's a 4-4. Four, four. They kill off our thing, we drown in the lock. Bring sanity. I'm going to mill another three here. All right, crackling drake time. Red, red, blue, blue. And if they don't kill this, there's a chance we could win. It is currently a 9-4. If I can, like, get one more into my graveyard and then team or battle rage, be cool. The opponent could potentially have no removal for this because push doesn't deal with it without revolt they already used the drown in the lock they might not have any more i'm gonna mill six here i'm currently 12 12 4 it's getting there and then jace that's not really okay oh wait that's just gonna kill us right yeah that that's that's game they're gonna mill us for 15 and then we just mill another 18 at the end step. All right, GG. Moving on to the sideboard. Yeah, this is probably, like I said, an auto loss. <laughs> um, so I think we cut Shieldred's Edict. And I guess it doesn't really make a difference, right? Really doesn't make a difference. Just run it back and try again. All right.
That is a one lander and it's red. So we got a mulligan. Uh, that one will keep. Does have double hand disruption, which is nice. Um, I think I got to ditch one of my ops here. Oh man, I don't have the turn one black mana. Unfort. They don't have turn one crab though. I'll keep a magmatic channeler. All right, let's go uh, duress mode on this. All right. Um, what are we gonna? Couple of those things are pretty annoying. I guess I'll take hideous laughter. Keep my card count high. Eat it can kill, kill Jace. I guess uh, Dreadbore can too. Would have been good to, good to have. All right, let's Thoughtseize. Probably take the Jace. Um, they drew Maddening. They got double Jace, Fraying Sanity. Well, Fraying Sanity is going to allow the Jace to combo, right? Just like mill us for 30 out of nowhere. Maddening is going to mill us for a bunch. So maybe I take the Fraying Sanity. Blanche's Last Reckoning is annoying, though. All right, I'm one incident sorcery away from Magmatic Channeler being online. Magmatic Chandler. All right, they are jacing for three. Blessing to give our guy minus three. That Jace is actually like really good. Like it's like not even as a mill card, just like as a standalone card. All right, ditch Dragon Skull Summit, get two free cards. We will take Consider. Cast Consider. I will keep a Thought Seize. Play Thought Seize. And we will take Bantu's Last Reckoning. And play another Magmatic Channeler. Now I got double 4 fours. We should be able to take care of Jace. Okay, looks like they're just going to cash in the Jaces to mill us as much as possible. They're just going to play another Jace here. And probably just mill us again. <laughs> oh, they're just going to draw a card. Oh, they draw three cards. I forgot it. Visions of Beyonds's. All right, that is not what I wanted. Dude, I'm very tempted to just attack them because I can two-shot them here. I'm going to do it. They're... <sighs> but, uh... Mm. No, because Jace is just going to plus and make it not lethal. I'm tempted to just take this turn to, like, ditch this and try to find a free card. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to get a free card here and kill Jace. Take it easy. Give me a Drake, please. Okay, I'll take a Thoughtsies. Village rights. Why are you running that card? I don't think it's very good with the crab. Ring sanity is too clunky right now. So I think I'll take fatal push. All right, they're down to no removal. So, you know, I think we're going to be dead next turn. They're just going to play Frank sanity and next turn double maddening cacophony and mill us for 32. So, yeah, I think we actually lost by 
not taking Frank's sanity, but it looks like they're not doing that. Okay, there's a crackling Drake. Go to combat, attack for a lot. I think the opponent might have thrown. Frank's sanity into double maddening was the play. That was going to be game. Um, they're going to village rights it. It's fine. Because ma uh, maddening Drake. Crackling Drake is 14 power. So that's pretty swole. Like your mom's belly. Pass turn. We get to draw a card here. Do I get a land? Nope. Another magmatic channeler. Alrighty. They need to draw a sweeper, but they don't have the second black source for Bontus. I think we got there. Got him. All right. Terrifying matchup. I think we leave it the same, right? Yep. A one lander, but I do have double Thoughtsies. I'm gonna keep this because I got a cantrip and I'm really hoping it'll find black mana for me because double Thoughtsies is great. That's what I love about Thoughtsies or cantrips in a deck is that like you can keep very questionable hands. All right, shock, pass. I'm going to consider in response because I want them to mill over my black source. Opt is interesting. I'm going to keep opt actually because um, it can help me dig again for, for a land. Watch them mill three black sources. Sulfur falls. Okay, it's, that's not black. Give me black. Okay, so it looks like they obviously have another crab. That's why they didn't fetch there. Or they're just waiting to see if they top back another crab. Either or. Not what I need. There we go. All right, Thoughtseize. Um, dude, I don't even know. Uh, I think I take Maddening, and then next time I Thoughtseize, I can take the Bontu's Last Reckoning. Or maybe I take the Minister of Inquiries, because that mills us for six. Village Rights draws them two cards. I'm going to take Village Rights. The heck is this swamp? The, the, the background art on it is like way too dim. They should have really upped the exposure on that. Maddening. Okay. Um, well, Edict is kind of bad because this is just going to mill me and then it's useless anyways. So I, I think I just go Thoughtseize into Magmatic Channeler. And then I take another Maddening, or I take the, the, the Last Reckoning. So our dude's a 4-4 four, four now. Really could use an untapped land for this Drake. Because then I got Kazul's Fury for it to be lethal. We know they have no removal. Like, if I can get this Kazul's Fury fling kill, that'd be glorious. Like, we're so close to that one shot. Come on, land for game, land for game. Oh my goodness, we got it. Okay. All right, we're so close. Let's attack.
Are we at 10? <laughs> okay, um, Crackling Drake. Blue, blue, red, red. And next turn, we got game with the fling. Just need them to not find an answer. Team or Battle Rage as well. That's also lethal. <laughs> Come on, don't find removal. We're right there. Another land would be nice. Didn't get the land. Okay, I think I go for team or battle rage. I love how crackling Drake doesn't care about rest and peace type effects either. That's awesome. And game. Heck yeah, <laughs> let's go. Nice. One and oh. That was awesome. Snuck it out there with a the one shot. If they can't answer the Drake, it can be scary. It can be a one shot kill. GG, Lyrock. That, yeah, that that was a bad mashup because my demonic milling me, milling myself for 13 and all the self mill I do, like fighting mill is like, I'm doing the job, I'm doing half the battle for them. So it's like very scary. Good thing I didn't draw any demonics. I think this is the second week in a row. We're, no, no, it was, it was two weeks ago. We played another demonic deck. It was the Harmless Demons. So two weeks later, we're playing another demonic deck different demonic cards <sighs> okay looks like we got a minute here so you know what time it is you know what time it is wordle time all right let's go with trust to start no no, no that, that has two t's train let's go train to begin all right, we got our game. We got to get out of here. There's literally none of those five letters in this word. All those letters are wrong. Okay, well, we'll pick that up one again when we got time. Slothosaurus Rex. And they got Gigantha. All right, we're going to be on the draw. And we got no shock lands, but I'm still going to keep this. Could definitely use the steam vents right about now. Steam vents would be the god draw. Like, literally, I think this is like a nutty hand if we draw Steam Vents right now. All right, is it Goblins? Is it Monored Aggro? Uh-oh. <laughs> Not looking good. So that means we literally have no time to stumble. We have to hit our stuff. Smoke? That's, that's, a, that's a good word. That could be the word. Oh no, are they double queuing? You know, when Ash Zealot got printed, I thought it was going to be meta. Never saw play. I still think Ash Zealot's a great card. And it could be very good right now in Pioneer because of the Lotus Field combo. It stops Leer. It literally stops the combo. And also, Scab Clan Berserker stops the Lotus Field deck. I think that either of those cards could be amazing. Like, Mono Red Aggro can just be great right now. Yeah, I think this opponent might be double queuing. Yeah, they're they're gone. Let's just let's just get a new game. Like they're not even playing. Alright, it is time. We're going with Smoke. S-M-O-K-E. Could be Swole. I liked Swole better. There is an E. There's literally none of these. Wow, there's so many good letters that this word just does not have. But E is correct, but not in the right spot. So let's go with... Um... Blued. 
Oh, L and E are in the correct spot. Okay. So what can come before L at the start of a word? F, fl fleet. Fleet. Let's try. No, no, there's no, there's no T. There's no T. Bleep. Bleeb. Please. No, no, that's not, that's not it. Uh, P L pl 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 plead, plead. No, there's no A. There's no A and there's no D. It's not plead. Pletch. Pl there could be a C H in this word. So no, there's not. Ple. No, no. E E was in the right spot. E was literally in the right spot. E L something. E something. Maybe it's not P. couldn't be why there definitely wouldn't be a why after the e at the end or would there holy poly roly poly could be e y all right we got our game here against tony mahoney and we're gonna be on the draw we don't have red but we got two cantrips so i'm gonna keep it I forgot Deathrite Shaman was legal. It's just not very good in Pioneer when there's not too many fetches. It's gonna be the rock, Glissa Sunslayer rock, probably. Okay, but Demonic Bargain's great. Because we have a Serpentine Curve in hand, so we can Demonic Bargain for just a land if we need it. But they're probably going to have Push ready for our token. Okay, consider... Put that in the graveyard, draw. Okay, there's our red source. Play my Matic Channeler. Tony Mahoney sounds like such a stereotypical Italian mobster name. When you think of an Italian American, people use very stereotypical names like Tony and Santiago. Okay, Woe Strider. A good card. All right, let's play another Magmatic Channeler. And then we'll just consider, try to like mill over another instant and sorcery to get four in our graveyard so we can block the Woe Strider. But this can exile stuff in my gra- Oh, that's terrible. That can exile my stuff. Oh, that is so bad. That's actually terrible for us. Dude, I screwed up. I was supposed to Demonic Bargain that turn. I was literally supposed to Demonic Bargain so that I can do Serpentine Curve the following turn. I could have just Demonic Bargain for a land, but I didn't. All right, I'll take that land. So now I'm going to Demonic Bargain for a, um, for a, a Cackling Drake. When I was testing this deck uh, a couple days ago, I Demonic Bargained and, and exiled all four of my Drakes. <laughs> um, all right, we'll take a Crackling Drake, play a Tap Land. Can't really attack since they can just eat in my graveyard and shrink my dude. They're eating a grave, but we can we can one shot them with Teamer Battle Rage. But they're probably just gonna do the mode to gain two life on the because there's a one creature in my graveyard. Death and Majesty. Oh no. Oh no. Archon. 
Dire Graph Rebirth. Uh-oh, we know what's going on here now. They're trying to reanimate Archon and then sack it to Exile 2 Permanence. This can re just straight up reanimate a creature. Jeez, they're going to get back... They're going to get back Ashen Rider and exile my Drake. I think it's over, guys. Yeah, I needed Shieldred's Edict. All right, you know what? I need Shieldred's Edict. I, let's just let's just dig for it. Let's dig for it. We need it. It's 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 Edict or bust. Bottom that. Serpentine curve. I guess we'll get a free Sulphur Falls. Opt. Bottom that. Dang it. Yeah, we're not going to be able to fight through that reanimation. Alrighty, onto the board. We can, we can win. We can win. Um... I don't like Collector Brutality here. Just give me some Dread Boars. Maybe I bring in all the Dread Boars for the Liliana. Stubborn Denial does exile, or does counter their removal in the Liliana, but I just feel like I'd rather have the, the removal spells, right? Keep one. Actually, no, they have those big scary reanimation spells. Like, we need to stop those. I feel like I'd rather have Dreadbor instead of the Edict. I feel like I'd rather have Power Word Kill instead of the Edict, even though the Edict can hit the Walker. I did kind of mess that game up, but it looks like we were going to lose anyways. Actually, no, we were actually going to win if I did the Demonic Bargain in the turn I was supposed to. <laughs> so I screwed that one up. All right, Mulligan the one lander. Dude, what is with these one landers today? Mulligan that. I have demonic bark, but this time I have no black. All right, we'll keep that. Ditch stubborn denial. Ditch dread boar. I should have kept dread boar. Oh no, I need black mana. Play this taps. Or you know what? I probably should have kept that. Just in case, like, I, I needed to go for the fling combo on turn five. Another demonic bargain. All right, well, black or bust. Here we go. It's a very dark day today. Very cloudy. But lately, it's been bright for like a long time during the day. Like it would go to like 9 p.m. before it finally starts to get dark. Like it's been bright for a long time this summer. Black. Nope. All right, give me, come on. No, that's red. Come on, give me black, give me black. Yes, yes, just on time. Okay, give me Drake. And then I also, I also, wait, 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 wait. I do have double blue, I do have double red. Okay, yeah, get Drake. I also have another demonic bargain so I can like seal the deal. I can seal the deal next turn. Woe Strider. Look at the cool goat token. Carrying a boot. Soul for Flaws. I like this special art. I don't even know what set that's from. Blue. Blue. 
Red, red. All right. If they do not kill this, we win. Which is demonic and grab a team of battle rage. So long as we don't exile it. Did we exile any of our other ones? We did not. Both team of battle rages are still in the library. Stayed away fine. All right, things are looking good so far. They can revolt push though with the low strider. So it's a little bit scary still. Sacking it to scry. They're revolting push, aren't they? Okay, I, they didn't slam it. I, I don't think they got it. They definitely would have snapped off that push instantly if they had it. So I think we win here. Unless they're holding up like Assassin's Trophy. Tackling Drake is the new Murktide region. It's the pioneer Murktide. That's all it is. Oh no. Oh, that only re reanimates a small creature, doesn't it? No, just any creature. All right, play Sulfur Falls. Go for Demonic Bargain. Grab Teamer Battle Rage. Go to Combat and Attack. Now, they could exile a land from the graveyard with the, with the, the Death Rite Shaman to Revolt Push as their last card in hand. But I don't think that's going to happen. Boom. 32 damage. Actually, 34 damage because the battle rage is going to the graveyard. Oh no, do they actually got it? That's the revolt right there. Are they going to exile a land from the graveyard? Don't you do it. Yes. All right, cool. Yeah, Crackles is sweet. I love Crackling Drake. It's it's like one of the most satisfying cards to, to cast. It's the big beefy flyer that draws a card upon entry. That's so good. Maybe streaming is what screwed my neck up. Seriously, like it hurts so bad right here when I stream. All right, we'll keep that. What's up, Captain? How's the deck going? Uh, the record is right uh, there. Posture. Yeah, it's like I try to stay postured when I stream. That's why my neck hurts. I'm not in a very relaxed, loose position. I'm so postured. And it's like the other thing is that I'm so focused on this screen. Like I'm turning my head so hard. Doesn't look like it. Also, I'm sticking my head so forward so you don't see my rolls. Because I'm fat. I gotta buy a scale. Like I have been eating very light. Obviously I'm a vegetarian, I eat my vegetables. I, I eat very light and I've been walking a mile a day while curling those little mini weights. And I feel like I should be losing weight, but it feels like I'm not. <laughs> like, um, okay, I do need my fourth land. So let's, let's keep that. Uh, I got too many lands now. <laughs> All right. Um, Play tap land and go. All 
Um, I do got to buy a scale though, so I can like actually keep track of my weight because I can, I cannot tell if like I'm losing weight or gaining weight. I do not know. <laughs> um, but I do eat very light. Like I said, a lot of rice cakes, which are very like eating clouds. I eat my vegetables and when I cook, it's like I, I cook vegetables and eggs, like. I just put like some eggs, some spinach, you know, maybe some tomatoes, bell peppers, habaneros, spice it up, and it's a good meal. All right, demonic bargain time. Go and grab a Drake. All right, we have one Kimber Battle Rage left in the deck. But we also have Kazul's Fury, so we're good. We can just fling it at them. So our Drake is currently 11 power. Looks like they're going to reanimate their thing pretty soon. Who at WotC had the glorious idea of putting Flashback on a reanimation spell? They did it twice with this and with Unburial Rites. You know, that, that's got to be the handicap. You know, you're milling yourself like crazy if you're going to do a reanimation deck. Why well, give flashback to the reanimation card? That should be the punishment, is that you have to draw it and find it to be able to reanimate. Not just the deck plays itself when you mill yourself. Blue, blue, red, and red. Alrighty. We have the game if they do not kill this. Is, it, is that a fly? There's a fly in here. There is a fly. Hold on, hold on a second, guys. I got it. I got it. I I normally like in some points in my life I'd be like if I see a fly I'd be like whatever you know let it go let it do its oh it's still alive I'd be like let it do its thing it's not hurting anyone but now I'm like that thing's gonna breed it's gonna it's gonna make eggs and there's gonna be so many flies in here when you see a fly it's like yeah just just deal with it I see it hold on hold on hold on. Okay, it's around here somewhere. I didn't get it. Um. All right. Well, I'm gonna dreadbore the Woe Strider. I think. Oh, I forgot. They can just escape the Woe Strider. Forgot about that. All right, play a Sulphur Falls. Let's play our Magmatic Channeler. And hold up our Stubborn Denial. Unfortunately, the Stubborn Denial isn't really online with the Ferocious. It's close. The Magmatic Channeler will help me find my stuff, though. I can start lighting up the stage with it every turn. Very good card. I just feel like this deck needs more in the lower end, more creatures. I feel like the the four Drakes, the two Serpentines, and the four Magmatic Channelers is not enough. To, like, be an aggressive deck. I mean, it's not meant to be. It's meant to be a combo deck. But when the opponent can have removal spells ready for your Drake, it's a little bit iffy. A little bit glass cannon, but maybe that's why there's um, Stubborn Denials and four copies of Thoughtseize. If you have a small amount of creatures, you gotta have those protection spells. Man, if only I had... Dang it. The Wolf Strider is back with the escape. 
that I was scared of. All right, get your blood crypt. Give me a free magmatic channeler. Play it. Oh, uh, you know what? I should have played an untapped land because I'd be able to like trigger Ferocious on command if I needed to. I'd be able to uh, Kazul's Fury, one of my dudes, and that would turn on the other one to be a 4-4 and then I'd have the actual Stubborn Denial hard cast. Iron Crag Pyromancers, yeah, those are awesome. When that card first came out, I played it in a deck on the channel. I love that card. And mill themselves for another four. The reanimated stitcher, they mill over Tyrannosaurus Rex. Ward haste eight eights. When did that card exist? Dude, I didn't know that card existed. I want to play that. I want to build my old Somber Wild Sage standard deck. Bro, give me some cards. Demonic Bargain, I guess. All right, give me Crackling Drake. I have 12 cards left in my library, and Teamer Battle Rage is still one of them. So I can find that next turn with my Magmatic Channelers. I can dig for it. Actually, my dude's already 20 power. All right, so I just need to not die here. <laughs> um, but they're they're going to get back their, their Titan Rex, but it looks like I may be forced to block that with my Drake. But if they don't attack with Woe Strider, I can just chump that with my Magnetic Channeler and live on two. So it depends on if they want to attack with their Woe Strider or not. Do I even have any more uh, big dudes in my library? Let's see, there's one Crackling Drake there. Let's check Exile. There's another there. So all the drakes are gone. What about the serpentines? There's still one serpentine in the library. Okay, so that's going to be our last win con. Which between opt and double... Oh, dude. We have fling. We have the fling card. We just need to get that serpentine. We can do this. We can do this. Oh, they tapped out. They didn't have enough to flash back the diagraph. They could have fetched with the fable, the fable passage. I don't know why they didn't. I think they actually threw because they had enough mana, didn't they? I think they did. Dang, I don't have a stubborn denial up. So they got their wrecks, but that doesn't kill us. They're just swinging everything. All right, they're forcing it. So I have to block there and I have to block there. Oh, wait, that's exactly lethal. That's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. All right, GG. Move on to the next game. We are just a turn away. That was a nail biter. All right, so we're down to one and one. And while we have a second, let's take a look at our Wordle. Our wordle. All right. CL could be CL Cle Clebe. Freeb. We got a game against Sleezer. We're going to be in the draw. Again with the one landers. I keep getting so much one landers. Um, 
I mean, if I do draw a land and I get a red source, I get to do double magic channeler and those can dig me for more lands. And I'm on the draw, so I think I'm going to keep it. Bleed? Oh. No, wait, I don't think there's a D in the word. Yeah, there's no, there's no D in the word. Could be bleep. I think bleep is a potential. All right, not looking good on land so far. I do have opt plus another draw, though, so I'm digging three deep here. Oh, what's up, Friar? Welcome to the stream. Oh, we're fighting the Lotus Field deck. Awesome. We have literally no sideboard for this. Our entire sideboard is dedicated to creatures. Like seven gain control effects and then like eight removal spells. So literally we have nothing for this. And all we have to do in this matchup is combo off and kill them before they kill us. <laughs> That's all we can do. But the thing is our combo wins on turn five and theirs wins on turn four. And also I'm mana screwed. That is not what I want. And I got a land, but it's not exactly the kind of land I wanted. All right, well, at least it's a land and I got a thought seize. So now I just got to hit nonstop lands from here on out. Thought seize will take pour over the pages. They got Thespian stage and double impulse. Did they find the Lotus Field? Nope, they're playing Thespian. Give me land. Didn't get the land. All right, I got to play the Channeler here. Was drawing, was drawn in seeing you play MTG? It have, it have watched your destiny vids. I'm a MTGA main. Indeed, to where wanna be. Nice. MTGA is fun. I wish I could play it, but it costs a fortune to play. MTGO is better because uh, I mean I'm not gonna say it's better than MTGA. I'm just saying it's better monetary, like money wise. It's better to play. It's cheaper. It's cheaper to play because services like Mana Traders exist, which is what I use. So I can literally just play all the MTGO I want because I can rent the cards. And I couldn't make content on MTG Arena because I'd have to spend like $9,000 to buy one deck because I have to open a million packs to buy wild cards. Although I think they recently added a system to where you can buy wild cards now, but it's still going to cost like $900 for a deck that should be $100. Alrighty, um, let's go ahead and loot away an edict here. We get a land. Shock the land. Let's go with Collective Brutality Duress Mode. Let's also do the Drain and Gain Mode, probably. What would we ditch? Probably Crackling Drake. Because there's no way they're going to kill our stuff. I don't think they're going to have any removal. All right, let's take Pour of the Pages. And then let's Thought Seize one of the hidden strings. All right, things are looking up. Things could potentially go our way here. All we need to do is draw another blue source. So hopefully the Magmatic Channeler finds that for us. But another thing we could do is just attack and then play another magmatic channeler and just try to go for game that way instead of risking okay never mind we found our land perfect so let's play crackling drake and attack for four all right we got game on the table this is looking really good suddenly and there's no possible way they can win next turn they play lotus field float some mana Clone it. Yeah, they don't even have enough to like hidden strings. 
You can buy packs that give more rare and mythic cards, but it's still a ripoff. Yeah. MTGA is too much of a money sink for me. Alrighty, this is game here. Let's opt. I'll keep a stubborn denial just in case they try to stop us, right? So if I attack with both, I timber battle rage my Drake. It's gonna be 12. If I timber battle rage my Mimatic Channeler, if they block with Baral, that's eight. So five goes over and then six. It's not enough. I still think that's what we do. If they do not block, we win. If they do block, it's going to be close. I do not think they're expecting Battle Rage. I really don't. Yeah, that's what I thought. All right, cool. With, with backup, with Counterspell backup, Battle Rage, GG. All right, cool. Got there. But this is going to be a terrifying matchup because we have no sideboard for this. None at all. See, I don't like the edicts. Oh, they just scoop it up. They're a salty player. All right, that was a full game. We count those. So that, that was literally a whole game. And we just got a salty meta player who's whining when because I can't win with my expensive meta deck. So we we like to we like to count those against salty meta players. That'd be unfortunate if it was a fellow brewer, but you know, take that all day against meta. All right. Yeah, that should be the downside. When you play Lotus Field, it should be like, there's only one round. If you lose, that's it. There's no game two. But then again, they'd have the advantage because they'd, they'd win game one every time and then just it'd be over. But that'd be funny if there was a companion. Or what if there was a magic card that literally destroyed target game two? Like, literally, it, the card would read, there is no game two. This is the last game. <laughs> that'd be funny. Would I get demonetized for saying that? I don't know. Because YouTube is extremely sensitive and potentially offensive. So I don't know if I would get demonetized for saying that. Um, so let's just go ahead and not just for the sake of, you know, I do this for a living. All right, so it's Mulligan. And uh, that one we will keep. Uh, bottom... Battle Rage can make me win on the spot on turn five. I'm gonna bottom it though. I just I need my lands and the cantrip's nice. Help me find my fourth land. Missed whatever it said. It's right there. Um. All right. Shock. Shahar Azad can time out game one every time, true. All right, so we're fighting Blitz, Feather, Feather Blitz. I do need my fourth land, but I don't want it to be a shock land. Like, my life total matters in this matchup. Can I get a Magmatic Channeler? Nope, but I did get the Painless Land. That's good. So let's play Blood Crypt Tapped and pass, and then we'll just hold up Consider. And then next turn, we Demonic Bargain, and we grab Battle Rage, and then we go Serpentine Curve, and then boom, we win. 
And I don't think they're going to have any exile based removal. I think all their removal is going to be damage based. So I think we should have a good chance here. All we need is for our Serpentine Curve to be a 9 9, which is not too much to ask for with the exiling 13 and then also considering here twice. Alrighty, let's consider. Oh, Cackling Drake, I want it. And now let's Demonic Bargain. And grab Teamer Battle Rage. All right, they're stuck on one land. That's very good for us. Unfortunate for them, but at least we can show off our combo. So our Drake is currently 12 power. That is enough. But I think in in fear of damage-based spells, I might go with the Serpentine Curve because it has fatter a fatter booty. So it's Shock and Serpentine Curve. And then Battle Rage for the win next turn. I don't think they're going to have Marsh of Otherworldly Light. I think all their spells are going to be like damage, right? What is a what even is a fractal? It's a it's a snake. It's like a crystalline creature. Cuz if you said what is a fractal, I I wouldn't be able to tell you. <laughs> I I wouldn't know what it would look like to describe it. So it is a crystalline creature. Could it be any creature or does it have to be a serpent? Could it just be anything that is crystalline? This guy flips. They do have an exile base removal spell. You've got to be kidding. They better not have another one. I swear if they got a second one, it would be salty. And the, the little Hekumon, whatever it's called, Kumano has haste. All right, play a tap land, play a drake. Blue, blue, red, red. All right, all they have to do is burn us for three and attack us and we lose. Okay, we have a chance. Reckless Impulse. They're looking, they're, they're like, okay, no white mana, we got there. GG. GG. Unless they got Reckless Rage. Reckless Rage would be the only card that can do it. Nope, they don't have it. That is GG. All right, Team of Battle Rage. Attack for 26. Nice. Um, all right. Screw Edicts. They're so bad. Give me uh, Dreadbores. Um, I'm actually tempted to cut Battle Rage just because I just want removal here. Cut Thought Seizes. Give me Power Word Kills. I'm not going to bring in Entrancing Melody and Blue Sun's Twilight. I don't think I want any of their creatures. It wouldn't be bad to steal a Monastery Swift Spear because we can cast a lot of spells too. Whatever. Actually, Power Word Kills better than Dreadbore. This deck is so weird. Actually, I don't want Stubborn Denial. I don't want Stubborn Denial. There we go. So much removal. <laughs> we just have so much removal now. Oh, that's the, the art of the little girl. What's her name? Sim Zimone. Zimone and Dina. So I was like, when I saw that card, I was curious about the lore like how did these two meet each other i would say that zamone was like taught druid skills by dina because dina's a druid right so like maybe dina took zamone under her wing 
to like teach her these mystical skills that Zamone didn't have. But Zamone is already a powerful sorcerer. Um, okay. I have double cantrip on the draw. And then once I find my second land, if it's black, I got triple removal spells, so I'm gonna keep it. Unfortunately, got a shock, but that's how it goes with this deck because everything's a shock and there's no basics. <laughs> how did Galta and Maverin team up? Um, well, vampires can have thralls. Was that an accident? I think the opponent accidentally scooped. I think the opponent accidentally skipped their turn. They just scooped it up. They mulliganed and then scooped. <laughs> Did they accidentally skip through their turn like as a mistake and then just like they're too salty? Too much pride to type in the chat that they accidentally went through the turn. All right, well, well, we count those, but we will get an extra game if this goes very short because that wasn't like an entire game. So we'll get an extra one. Yeah, like we'll get an extra one eventually. Okay, so let's bring back up our Wordle and we were going to try like bleak. Wait, no, no, no. Bleed, bleep, bleep. Oh my goodness, it was bleep. <laughs> it was actually bleep. No way. We just straight up got it like that. Are these my percentages? I got one on, on number two before. And most of the time I get it, it's on number four. And sometimes on number five. And one time I got it the last one. That seems about right. But yeah, it was actually bleep. Nice. All right, well... Let me open this up. What other games we got here? Spelling Bee. Crossword? Let's do a crossword. Oh, I have to subscribe to play. Rip. Spelling Bee. We can play Spelling Bee. But we'll do that um, once we have free time. Okay. We're going up against Hawkeye, 148, and we're going to be on the draw. We will keep that in hopes that we can find a black source. Unfort. Don't take my demonic bargain, please. They're going to take my serpentine curve. Or maybe my brutality. Or maybe my opt, because it's my turn one play and it can help me find a black source. Nope, they take the demonic bargain. Rip. Didn't get the thought seize bug either. All right, so we're going up against Rakdos. Let's see how this deck can fare against top of the meta. Actually, I think Rakdos actually dropped to like third i think the lotus field deck like rose above it mm. they're gonna take my opt they're gonna take my opt. let me let me look at the meta i think that um Now they take my serpentine curve. Top is Rakdos midrange by a long shot. Okay, I guess I was thinking of modern. Um, Rakdos scam and modern, I think, dropped to like number three. But next after that, Green Devotion actually made a comeback. Oh, serpentine curve. Got the little Thoughtsies bug. All right, well, let's do duress mode. Depeche mode. And then after that is blue eye control. Well, I'm going to take fatal push because that can kill my serpentine curve. All they have is a braid and two lands. Nice hand opponent. And after that is, is it creativity? The model humans, Abzan, Grease Fang, Lotus Field combo. Really? I haven't fought Grease Fang in a minute. Or humans. Or creativity. I fight creativity all the time in modern because it's top of the meta. Hello. 
Yeah, creativity is what roasted number one in the meta and modern, which is unfortunate. <laughs> That's still legal. Um, all right, well, let's consider. Bottom. Edict is not terrible. Uh, dog and dog and 87. Thank you so much for the follow. Okay, so currently Serpentine Curve is 5, 6 power. Joke's on you, opponent. I got the answer, and now my dude is 7 power. Oh, Drake, let's go. They had a braid, which deals three damage. Not quite enough. So yeah, Drake's the play. Blue, blue, red, and red. Excellent. And there's even a consider. So consider if I'm Milanus and Sorcery off that. Actually, no, no, I already have lethal. I just consider and then battle rage. That's the game. We know they have an abrade, which isn't enough. So we just need them to not find hard removal here. But it is Rakdos. Okay, Fable, that's not that's not going to do it. I think we got there. There's nothing they can do for one mana to kill this. Nothing at all. So we just consider. And then... Um, Battle Rage. That is 16. GG. <laughs> All right, so, so far so good against Rakdos. So far so good against Rakdos. Now, um... I think everything we got's fine. Again, Edict coming out. Give me Dread Boars. <laughs> Screw Edict. Um, collective Brutality ain't bad either, but I definitely want to have a way to deal with Shieldred. Entrancing Melody for Shieldred would be pretty good. Um, but it's kind of late in the game for that to happen. Stubborn Denial ain't bad. They do have some Haymakers. But on the draw, I feel like it's not as good. It could be good to protect us when we're going for it. So I'll, I'll keep in two. I'll keep in two. That is a two lander with no blue. But if I mulligan and then proceed to get Thoughtseize, we're going to be ultra screwed. I do have Dreadbore. And if I do find the third land, I got Demonic Bargain. Likely if we find any lands, they're going to be blue. I'm kind of tempted to keep it. I'm going to keep it, actually. Because like, if I draw two lands, no matter what color they are, because one of them is going to be blue. I'll be able to at least Serpentine Curve after my Demonic Bargain. Those are Mono Red Lands. All right, well, it's Thoughtseize. Regner Bankbuster, Fetal Push, Brave Air Trespasser, Rending Volley. Yikes. Um, well, I feel like taking Rending Volley because that definitely kills Drake. I could also take Reckoner Bankbuster to stop them from like drawing a bunch of cards. Graveyard Trespasser, I can kill. Fatal Push kills Serpentine Curve. I do not have blue for my Drake, anyways. So maybe I take Push because I'm more likely to play Serpentine Curve. I really don't know what to take here. I'm gonna take Rending Volley. Bankbuster. I was thinking about it. I was considering it because it's gonna 
give them a lot of value. But I feel like they're not going to activate it on turn three. I feel like they're just going to play their their guy, their graveyard trespasser. Man, their hand is good. <laughs> their hand is very good. And they top the Thoughtseize. See if they want to take one of my land drops or maybe Dreadbor. They take the Drake. But I do have the other Drake. Dude, what's with these red lands? All right, let's play this, this tap land while we have nothing to do. So I may need a demonic bargain for literally a blue source, as sad as that is. There's Bankbuster. Yeah, unfortunately it looks that way. I think I have to demonic bargain just for a land. Kind of sad. So give me a Sulphur Falls. Now watch me end up top decking another blue source and it'd be all for naught. Ow, my back. It's broken. The gang. Call the gang. Erborg. Erburger. I mean, one in my eye. All right, they're drawing a card. So far, Reckoner Bank Buster was a four mana cantrip. Anyway, they activated it twice. All right, well, Serpentine Curve time. I don't know how big it is, but it's bound to be decently big. Ten ten, perfect. Oh, they're just going to push. Dang it. I didn't. Ah, uh, dang it. I forgot. I should have waited if I can hold up Stubborn Denial. Oh, man. I was going to say, all I have to do is attack and then fling it with Kazul's Fury. But nope, I forgot about the push. So now the opponent can start really taking advantage of this bank buster. And now things are going to be a little bit bad for us. Well, let's consider. Bottom another Rakdos land. Okay, um, let's shock here so that we can hold up Stubborn Denial. And then let's play... Um... Do we not even have floors and sorcerers in the graveyard? Okay, we do. Thank goodness. So we can hold up Stubborn Denial here for full value. Now I'm hoping they play some big old Planeswalker. All right. Let's kill that so that I get to keep my dude. My dude can, like, help me find stuff. If I can get up to seven mana, I can get to the point where I can play a Drake and fling it in the same turn. I mean, it's not the end of the world. Bankbuster there was essentially 10 mana draw three. It was fine. Blood Tithe. I'm going to have to kill that with Dreadbor, or else it's going to kill my things. There's a Trespasser. They eat my Drake. I 
I'm surprised they didn't eat an incident sorcery to shrink my dude. Um, yeah, I think let's just loot away Kazul's Fury and look for a thing. Give me that serpentine curve. And then let's, uh, let's opt here to grow the curve a little bit bigger. Drown Catacomb to the bottom. Thoughtseize is nice. I just can't afford to play it right now. All right. Well, play big old serpentine curve. How big is it? 1515. But I threw away my Kazool's Fury. Um, all right. Well, let's see if they have an answer to this 15. They, all they need is a push <laughs> or a dread bore or a edict or a power word kill or a Liliana. Or a shield dread because it's got death touch. Yep, there's the shield dread. But I do have dread bore. They're looting. Now, don't you dare draw Thoughtseize. Okay, nice. I keep on... I always think that this has menace. This trespasser. All right, well. Red, black, red boar. This. Let's loot. Get rid of this. Give me consider. Let's consider. Throw that in the graveyard. That's not very good. Thought sees you. Another bank buster. And um, I have to stay back for blocks. If I don't, then I die. So I need to find Humor Battle Rage. <laughs> That's what I need. I'm very close. Um, also, the little Kazool Sphere. I can play the cards until in a turn, right? I'm gonna play that card this turn. Okay, well, that doesn't do it because I don't have trample. Like, I need to get in, but this little pilot token can block. They're almost at the point where they can alpha and just swing through me. They might even be able to right now by activating Bugbear. Yeah, they're just gonna activate Bugbear and I die. Yep, they're doing it. All right, onto the board. I think we run it right back. I mean, Melody, Entrancing Melody ain't the worst. The game is going to go long. But, I don't know, it just feels iffy. I don't think I'm going to do it. It's not the worst decision. Do it for four. Take control of one of the Blood Tithes. I would kill, consider. Okay, I'll keep it just because of the cantrip. It does not look good, but it has a cantrip. So, like, cantrips literally make any hand look keepable. Because you never know what that cantrip could find for you. Thank goodness they didn't thought these. I would have been screwed if they did. All right, consider... Put that in the grave. I just draw another consider. <laughs> Tap blood crypt, go. Hold up another consider. I want to play mono white control with Reckoner Bank Buster. Because I, I want to play uh, that lay down arms card. I haven't had the chance to play it. Oh, bargain. Let's go. I just have all my shock lands. All right. Well, let's uh, Steve Vance and I drew another bargain. So I have the win on turn four by bargaining for a battle rage. But, you know, they're definitely going to have an answer for my first Drake, maybe even my second Drake. The question is, will I be milled out by then? I think I'll still be good. I'll still have like 20 cards left. Fable. 
Okay, so if they tap out for like a shield rid, then I win. All right, blue, blue, red, red. Drake. Drake's fortune. Wait, what kind of fortune? I got a fortune. Okay, please tap out for Shieldred. Come on, don't kill my Drake. I'm not blocking that because that's obvious a braid bait. I'm not taking that's also obvious revolt push bait, but then they can just sack their treasure token. Um, I have to consider the options though, so I cannot block that because of a braid. There's running volley. Rip. Well, at least I got Serpentine Curve, so I got another chance. And they had Shieldred anyways. All right, well, I have Power Word Kill, but I also want to play the Serpentine Curve, so I don't even know <laughs> what to do. Um, I just got to kill that. They're probably going to answer my Serpentine Curve, so I might as well just start playing for the long game, right? Yeah, I, I just got to start playing for the long game. There's there's no way my, my little snake is going to live. They're going to have push or red boar or whatever. All right, so let's just kill this. Play one of these, which is a 1-3, I think. No, it's a 4-4. Four, four. Tap land and go. If I can demonic bargain like before playing the Serpentine Curve and like I can bargain literally for a land drop. And then once I have seven mana, I can play and fling the Serpentine Curve in the same turn and there's nothing they can do about it. So I think that's what I might try to work up towards. Yeah, there's the push. See, baited, baited with that. So I literally think I might just demonic bargain for a land and then hope that I top another land. Unless they're threatening. Ah, oh, no. They have another Shieldred. Okay, well, I'm dead. I don't think there's any way out of this. I can Demonic Bargain for a Dreadbore and kill Shieldred and live on two. But it'd just be like way too far gone. You know what? No, 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 no. No, no, we're, we're good. Because if I draw my seventh land and it's untapped and painless, like it's a check land, then I just play the Serpentine Curve and fling it all in one turn. So I can just go with the tap land here. No, I could shock this because I can play a Magmana Channeler for blocks. But then again, they could have removal. That's the problem. If they have removal. So literally, if I shock this and play my thing, I'd be dead to removal. But if I don't play it, then I'd be dead to like a hasty creature. So I think it's better. My better odds are if I don't shock it. But then again, if I play my, mag my magmatic channeler and it lived, then I'd be able to use it to, to like ditch a card and look for my land drop. So we'll get our dread boar here. Kill that. And now I'm dead to any kind of like hasty creature, like Coligon's command would kill me. Um, but I win if I top my seventh land that is painless, like a painless land. All right. Oh, no, no, you got to be kidding. That was my win. That was my win. All right, I can still block for like if I get another creature. Oh, there's Stomp. I was dead anyways. Was I getting my land? 
Come on, let me see at least. Let me see. Come on, game. Why does it lag so badly after a game ends? I just want to see what I was going to draw. Let's see if we, it was a uh, soul for falls or something. It's not letting me see. All right, well, we had two people quit out, so let's get one more game. Get one more game here. All right, Spork Dos Fork. And we're going to be on the play for our final game. And we'll keep that. Looks like we're on a Rakdos deck. But I assure you, opponent, we're not. Skrelv. Yeah, Skrelv is a little annoying. That's a little annoying, too. Um... I'm going to take Patchwork, and then I'll just collect a Brutality on the Skrelf. What was their lands? Lair of the Hydra, Brushland, Razor, Bur so it's just Green, White, Hardened Scales, probably. I don't need to deal with it right now, so let's just get out our Magmatic Channeler. Drake is an amazing draw. This should help us find our lands for the Drake. Don't need this deck could ever beat Rakdos. We're close, though. We were literally like a turn away. If only I got a hand that didn't have mono shocks. Like that game, did you see my mana base? I had nothing but shocks. Like, if I didn't have to pay all that life, we would have had an extra turn. We would have potentially got there. All right, let's opt. Oh, another Drake. I'll take it. All right, let's uh, kill Skrelv. And get in there for one. And then we follow up with double drakes. Dang, it's been cloudy all day. How big is this cloud? It must be like two states long. Ingenious Smith. Animation module, definitely hardened scales. Hardened scales is scary to fight. But good for us, they didn't get a very good start. Or we kind of disrupted their start. Ooh, battle rage. Now all I have to do is find the demonic. All right, red, red, blue, blue, Drake. Currently a 3-4. There we go. There's a land. Good thing that only gets a counter only once per turn. If that was literally just another patchwork automaton that dug for another artifact, that'd be broken. I like that brush land art land. Art land. Land art. Brush land art. Brush land land art. Skrelv. Because of Skrelv, it looks like um, Children's Edict might finally be viable. But then again, this animation module makes Edict very bad. <laughs> um, alrighty. Well, let's just play another Crackling Drake here.
Bucket Brutality number two. I play this tapped, and let's get in with our Drake for three. Next turn, I might just do Drain and Gain mode on Collector Brutality. Train them and then grow my Drakes. Attack for eight. And then I could also team your Battle Rage. That might even be lethal. Who knows? Could be. Drain and Gain, Double Strike. Our dudes are five fives. They, they go down to 14. Yeah, I, that's game. That is literally it. They don't have any sacrifice outlets, so they can't get flyers off their hanger back. So yeah, this is it. That's awesome. Opponent's going to be salty. <laughs> All right, well, let's uh, loot away this Steve Mance with my Mana Channeler. Get Edict. Play this. I'm not going to eat it because that'll give them flyers with the Hanger Back Walker. So let's um, drain here with Collector Brutality. And then Battle Rage of Drake, and that is well over lethal. Awesome. Very, very excellent. I love it. Crackling Drake is such a fun card. All right, on to the board. Uh, is this finally the game we'll use in Transing Melody? I don't know. I really do not know, but they like this, like the hardened scales deck can really commit to one creature and make it massive. So I can see it being fine. I can see it being okay. I'm kind of tempted to take out Thoughtseize and also Stubborn Denial and also Edict. And then probably just bring in all of these just to try it. <laughs> and then bring in like three Dreadboard or three uh, Power Word kills. Collective Brutality is not the best either. Bring in Power Word Kill and Dread Boar. Just do that and try it. <laughs> I gotta try them. Yeah, they're in there for a reason. I feel like they could be okay. You can tell the stream's nearing its end when my when the light in here starts to get dim. This is usually around when it ends. The last game. And right when it's starting to get dark. Dude, I can't wait for this setup behind me to be done so I can stand while streaming. I'd be standing right now. It'd be so nice. Uh removal. Drake. Removal three drakes. Don't know how I feel about this. Uh, this could be pretty bad. I'm going to keep it. My instinct tells me not to mulligan this. It's weird. It could pan out all right, but it also could pan out pretty poorly. I somehow knew I was going to top deck one of those. Just play things I can kill, please. They're going to play Ingenious Smith, aren't they? 
I just hope they don't play uh, the, the guy with Ward. That's the most annoying. Ozolith. That's the one that is just the hardened scales, right? Yeah. That's really good. Oh, Demonic Bargain. Let's go. Play Dragon Skull Summits. We can hold up Power Word Kill. Demonic Bargain may have to just find the land for me, though. Which I'm okay with. I like lands. Genius Smith. I'll power word kill that. It can grow bigger. If I don't kill it now, I'll regret not killing it later. Once it deals like seven damage to me. Copy Drake's with Reflection of Kiki. Oh, that's disgusting. And the Reflection of Kiki can help the Drake's too because it can loot away other spells. I think that uh, I think that the Drake deck would be awesome with flashback spells. You could play Drake in modern and be perfectly fine. What do they get? Skrelv. But they don't have the color for it. Heck yeah. They got greedy not playing that forest first. You should have done it so you had a, uh, a versatile spell. I messed in my word when a bird flew by my window. I got distracted. Hello. Fox McLeod, 12933. Thank you for the follow. Welcome. Another gain control effect. All right, I'm going to have to demonic bargain for a land drop here. I'll get a drowned catacomb. And looks like we are on board to win pretty soon. All right, demonic bargain. Give me... Do I have no more drowned catacombs? Okay, right there. Perfect. Awesome. Hey! So now Crackling Drake's a 9-4. And Genius Smith grabs another Skrelv. So they have two Skrelvs in hand, which I can gain control of with Entrancing Melody to protect my Drake. I'm still just going to go for Drake, though. Oh, a battle rage. If they do not have an answer, that's going to be game. All right, blue, red, red, blue. Can I get more lands, please? I'd like more lands. Thank you. Perfect. So I can gain control of Skrelv next turn and then Battle Rage for exactly 20. I just really hope the opponent taps out. And usually the Hardened Scales deck taps out every turn. They're not the kind of deck that holds up things unless they just to activate Walker. But usually they do everything, just dump all their mana into their various permanents on their turn because they have so many mana sinks in this deck. You can play like 26 lands and hardened scales despite it being full of one and two drops because there's just so many mana sinks. You can like activate this for three, put another counter in a thing and then make a servo. Activate this to put a counter on a thing. Ozolith is amazing. I have all this also written down to brew a deck around. I just haven't gotten around to it yet because there's so much on the plate. Also, I tend to play decks from people. It's probably like every one in three decks I play is one of my own. Because I'm always busy working on stuff. I sometimes don't have enough time to brew a deck some weeks. Alrighty. So they have one mana. I don't think I'm too scared of that. So let's just go ahead and Entrancing Melody. Oh, I can gain control of Hanger Back Walker just for two. But then again, they can protect it with Skrelv. So let's just do it this way. Gain control of Skrelv. 
Nice, they didn't activate it in response. And let's go for game. 20 Exaxes. Let's see what they got. They could have March of Otherworldly Light, but they'd have to like exile multiple white cards, which I don't think they got. Is this like an artifact deck? And a GG. Got there. <laughs> nice, beautiful. We ended up four and two. We ended up positive. The deck turned out like I seriously did not have any expectations for this deck. I didn't know if it was going to do horrible or amazing. And it looks like it was actually pretty good. I didn't expect it to be as good as it was, but I still disagree with the removal suite of Edict and Brutality. I hate this. And the sideboard is so weird. It's just like all these 15 spells in the sideboard hit creatures and they're like all four of us. It's like, that's so weird. Why not prepare for other stuff? Like not just creature decks. Definitely wasn't a fan of, of the Blue Sun's Twilight and Entrancing Melody plan in the sideboard. I like these cards and I feel like they're very good for some decks. I just don't think this was really the deck for it. I could see running a couple, maybe like maybe three at most, but not seven. <laughs> and then um, having four and four of these, when really you should have more removal, like better removal in the main deck so you don't have too much need for removal in the board. And then you can only have like maybe three or four extra removal spells in the board. And you can free up so many extra slots for better like anti-meta cards. Like you need a way to deal with the Lotus Field deck because we really had none. You'd need a way to deal with, um, you know, control and grindy matchups. Like Phyrexian Arena exists now. Like if you're fighting hard control, because Azurius control is third in the meta now, it'd be nice to have a way to just draw a ton of extra free cards and get around like sweepage and stuff like that. Because I feel like against the control deck like Azurius, where they can kill every Drake you play, you maybe don't want a demonic bargain and exile over your additional Drakes. At that point, I would just replace them for, for Phyrexian Arena so that the game can go much longer and I can find more Drakes naturally instead of exiling them. Um, but that's that's only for control I'm talking about. In general, obviously, you should still have Demonic Bargain because that's the combo. Um, but yeah, the combo worked out a lot better than I expected. It was actually pretty good. And I like the Magmatic Channelers. They were excellent. They enabled the Stubborn Denials as well. Stubborn Denials were clutch a couple times, but overall, I feel like they were pretty um, useless at times because when we have the Drake for four mana, we're going to slam it on turn four. We're not going to wait until turn five and then play it with seven and all backup when we're already going to die and then just like win on turn six. That's too slow. So I, I wasn't that big a fan of seven and Isles, to be completely honest. I think they just did not fit with the curve of the deck, to be honest. And, and then like also, I would probably have more looting spells. There's a tainted indulgence can really help fill your graveyard um, and like dig deep for the crackling dragon, and put instant sorcerers in your grave. And there's also a new excellent card called Sar Sauron's Ransom. And that card would be amazing in here. Because like it'd put four like so many instant sorcerers in your graveyard and then also help you dig for your drakes and stuff and st things you need. So that card I'd probably also try in here. Oh yeah, not legal in Pioneer. You're right. <laughs> so the Lord of the Rings cards are not legal in Pioneer. I forget because we were just playing modern. Anyways, yeah, that's all I really have to say. Um, I just think it it's a little bit rough in some of the decisions, but it could definitely be fixed up and the deck could be bomb. It could be great. But they did first place in a 17-player tournament with it. See, well, you can see, if you read Japanese, you can see their username... Ra oh, wait, let me put this down. Right there. You see? That's their name. Semba Nobu... No. Semba Nobuhisa. That's the name right there. Alrighty. So for those watching on Twitch, stay tuned. We're going to raid somebody. Uh, for those watching on YouTube, thank you so much for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to hit the like button and drop a comment because interacting with the video in different types of ways like that really helps the algorithm. And if you are new here, consider subscribing. We do Modern every Monday and Pioneer every Friday. If that's the kind of thing, I hope you stick around. And uh, if you want to check out the gameplay live on Twitch, we stream every single Saturday afternoon. Stream the whole day. Five hours. And I hope to see you there. Uh, link to that is down below in the description. And if you want to check out my second YouTube channel based around the game Destiny 2, link to that is also down below. And with that, I'll catch you in the next video. See you later.